This meeting serves as the board's annual organizational meeting in accordance with board policy <coughs> 321. I get the great pleasure of presiding over the meeting for a short period of time until the board elects the board. So at this point, I'm pleased to the pledge of allegiance. Secretary to assist with the process in the election of the chair. Amanda, would you serve as acting secretary? Thank you. Uh, first order of business is uh, the election of officers. Uh, per Roberts' rules of order, nominations do not need a second. Uh, the floor is now open for nominations for chair of the Waterford Board of Education. Are there any no nominations for chair of the Waterford Board of Education? Uh, yes, I would like to nominate Greg Benoit for chair of the Board of Education. Greg, do you accept that nomination? Sure. Are there other nominations for chair of the Waterford Board of Education? Are there any other nominations for chair of the Waterford Board of Education? Hearing none, nominations are now closed. Uh, per Robert's Rules of Order and Board Policy, a person must be elected by a majority of those members present. It will take five votes tonight for a person to be elected. Individual votes by board members will be recorded in a minute. Seeing as there uh, is only uh, one nomination, uh, I'd ask all in favor of those uh, casting a vote uh, for Greg DeNoint as chair of the Waterford Board of Education, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? With that said, I would congratulate Greg Benoit. Thank you. elected a chair. The chair will preside over the election of a secretary during the remainder of the meeting. And once again, congratulations. So before we proceed to uh, elect the secretary, the board owes Jody a great thank you. Uh, I don't know if you know, but the first number of hours that Jody has given to the school system in the right town, she's been a warrior for all the students and for everyone in town. Thank you, Jody. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Could I have a nomination for secretary? Uh, I'd like to nominate Marsha Benvenuti as secretary. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. I'll call the nominations closed. And again, since there's only one nominee, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, the first item on the agenda is introduction of visitors. Uh -huh. Sure. I'd like to welcome our PK staff here tonight from Great Neck Elementary, uh, as well as some parents of the pre-K program. I certainly welcome any community members. Uh, we welcome our chamber choir. We're looking forward to hearing from you in just a moment. And certainly staff and administration uh, and community. Is there any public comment? Sir, would you identify yourself, state your name and address? My name is Mitch Connor, 19 Olive Street. I'm a uh, minister chair. I'm going to support the newly elected. Um, I have the privilege of having three children in the great night Uh, but a new uh, pre-K 
programming so yeah. much different. Uh, that here makes a huge difference as a parent of uh, traveling both ages. And uh, I can't say enough of, of what Great Next has accomplished. And I know I've spoken to Tom multiple times about it. I know it's on your agenda for tonight. And I just want to make sure that this program is important and they have a wonderful thing that they're going to show you this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, moving on, we have a very special presentation. Now let me do the introduction. Sure. Uh, you can see a large contingent of our high schools here tonight. This is our chamber choir. Uh, they've been performing all over the region, town, and multiple venues. And uh, what better place uh, for them to show off their talents than a board of ed meeting? So, at this point, I'll hand it off to the Chief of Choir Director, Mr. Tim Fiervanti.
he's in an effort to educate. Goes into my job. We, every year as a tradition, we do a piece called Carol of the Bells, right? Our Carol of the Bells, we deliver, you know that one, right? You know that one. <laughs> so, in an effort to bring things to a higher level, I, I had a, a whole series of questions for them and, and all kinds of information. Which we found out that the piece actually is not, well, we knew it was not American, it's Ukrainian. So we decided to figure out what was the original, right? The American words were added later, so what was the original? So we found the original, and it just so happened that in our chorus we have a girl that's Russian who speaks fluently and knows the Ukrainian dialect and actually knows the whole, the whole poem. And she taught us all the Ukrainian. So we're going to do Carol of the Bells in the original Ukrainian. Uh, kind of so, here we go. And it's called Shake and it means bountiful. <laughs>
Chris Osman, principal at uh, Cosmo County. Nicole Tebow, principal teacher at Great Neck. Amy White, pre-K at Great Neck. Melinda Lucas-Feldman, I'm an era at the pre-K at Great Neck. Okay, Tom, do we have any uh, correspondence? Uh, Taiwan, oh, consent. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> any additions or corrections to the consent agenda comments? <laughs> Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes.
lot of work that went into it. We're a full-day program. Um, we currently serve so we currently serve um, 33 students, and we are growing. We have three new students that will be starting in January, and then another two in February. So by the end of the, this first uh, normal year, we will have served probably somewhere between 38 and 40 students within the program. So there's a team of um, seven professionals in there. They really go to the service providers, and of course, um, Amy and Nicole are directing it.
And um, in social studies, we're really talking to them about um, family. And I know um, both classrooms, if you went in there, have pictures of the students with their families and trying to get them to understand how their school family can connect with their family at home and making those connections. There's constant communication. I'm not quite sure how these students do it every day because they communicate every single day to let parents know what is going on in the classroom so that when they talk about it, when they talk about it, when students get home, um, their parents can talk to them about what you know happened during the day and then just moving them that night as well. In competition, remember, we call it what we just think that day. Sometimes the person you remember when I had for breakfast is for the person you. But, you know, so have practicing that skill at home with their families is so important. Mm -hmm. So some of the guiding principles um, for working, early learning and development in the community um, for our community, uh, we believe, and I know what it does, but also we really need to go high quality early learning. Um, and every day we bring the students together um, and they bring back to the session to support their early growth and development. Um, our children, young children are capable and competent and um, they're unique in their growth and we have very mixed abilities and mixed, mixed ages, um, ages three and four, and they're always learning from one another. They're learning that you know, everyone is unique and we can learn from one another and um, develop their own social preschool children really learn through play. So I talked a lot about kind of the academic piece behind that, but if you walk into the classroom, what you would see is children that are playing. So how does a work plan for play and exploration look different from a curriculum where you would say to children, just go and play? So we build curriculum based on children's interests. So you can see one of our little friends really has an interest in music. And so we've got quite a musical talent that we have in our pre-K room. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about a lot of the materials that are in there. We like to use that for materials. So a lot of the displays that you see in the hallway and in the pre-K um, room are all natural materials. Um, there's a lot of small group instruction that happens in the pre So um, kind of in, the, in the morning, and I can have Nicole and Amy take you for a typical day in a minute, but in the, minute, in the morning, they start out with kind of morning meetings. This is our other classrooms do as well, but it's typically a song, and then there's a lot of small group activity as well. One of our families in the conferences, and they were just reporting that their food has a Christmas list, and on that Christmas list was a hand table and water. <laughs>
preparing for each other. Um, so from there, we split into our small groups. So we've got two small groups, one of our parents, one small group, while we do the other. And we do activities that just, we just know development. We still do better at the age group in smaller numbers. You know? um, there's more focus. There's more time for you to give more of your attention to them. So we do a little short small group that works on a variety of things, that can be a math activity, movement, literacy, any of the above. Um, and then from there we have a So we have a case card that has a picture and a name of it um, of them and they are able to choose wherever they like to go in the classroom. They can go to the next one and that means that they can go to the You know, and we have really purposeful table activities that have literacy and math all intertwined, but again it's not structured learning, it's play opportunities. So they're learning to be excited. And then we put, we talk a lot about, um, for example, the water people because they had a colander and we only had one. And so we talked about, oh, no, two friends can go there. What's going to happen if you only have one colander? You know, even though they share material. Um, and then lunch, recess, all that stuff. We are lucky to have specials. So art comes to us. We go out for a gym. We get to go out for music and library, which is really great for them to experience those things and get ready for some of our in. Um, and the playground will come up in a couple pictures later on, but it's really cool to see them use the base. What used to be the basic playground is now our playground. And seeing them make successful games, you know, just some challenging and stuff. And then knowing they can do it and seeing the look on their face when they can find the top power, you know, it's just giving them the opportunity to, to try things and be risk takers and all that good stuff. So, uh, we do have to have a time. And so just kind of back to children learn to play and all having a little play. Just kind of walking through some of the pictures that are here. And even they're looking at um, developing cognitive skills and their physical disabilities. Um, constantly looking on um, the new vocabulary in front of them and having them to keep that back to you and use that as they can work in small groups as well. And then social skills are a really big part of that as well. So the school is just explaining that there's one of them and how do we care, how do we use our words, how can we um, emotionally regulate ourselves as well in terms of what's upsetting, how can we solve that problem. Um, literacy skills obviously a big part of that. Um, they're surrounded in those classrooms by friends and they hear stories, they listen to stories, they hear stories through songs, um, and it's something that is continuing throughout the day. So I really curious to see some of our uh, little friends doing some fun activities. Yeah, they took it up in the top left corner. We had opened up a pumpkin. And so it's so something that's uh, familiar in their world. Maybe it's something they've done before, and maybe it's something they haven't done before. Um, but it wasn't just that we got the pumpkin and we opened it up. Before, we talked about it first. And there's that language piece of, what do you think this is? And a lot of them knew what it was called. Um, let's describe it. What does it look like? I always ask them, what do you know? That's kind of a big key phrase or question that we always ask, so that we're getting them to talk to us. It's not us just putting out information in them. We're asking them questions and letting them tell us what they think and what they know it. Oh, it's round, it has lines, um, it's smooth, things like that. And then before we opened it, we actually made some predictions. What do you think could be inside this? And we wrote them down. So they're, they're watching us write. Um, sometimes we're sharing the time and letting them write letters if they know how to. Um, and then when we open it up, was your prediction correct? You know, there was a child who really thought there were going to be cookies inside. But we opened it up and a lot of them saw the seeds and then they saw, they saw the pulp and they saw, one child said, there's spaghetti in there. <laughs> so, you know, it's that spaghetti. Let's look at it more closely. Let's smell it. Everybody holds a piece of it. Um, and then they looked at it, is that spaghetti? No, that's not spaghetti. And then they learned that you were. This is called pulp. And so another child said, no, these are the ducks. And they said, no, that's another word for it. And we're having those conversations with them all day long. That's what we're doing all day long. Um, so really good 
so much goes into just that one little snippet of an activity. And then children were sorting that they all of a sudden were pulling apart the seeds from the bowl and making two piles. So there they are now they're sorting. And then some children are counting. Um, and then just describing how it felt. It's slippery, it's wet, heat, it's gross. Let anyone experience that. Um, what else? At the bottom left there, we have these wood pieces. <coughs> They're figuring out how to build letters. Um, so that's a, a one way that we work on teaching mm -hmm. letters to, to young children is letting them build them, letting them feel them. That letters are lines and curves. They're not just these abstract symbols out there that you have to memorize. You can touch it and you can feel it and you can build it. Even if you can't write it, you can still create it. I like this one too. The kiddo on the right um, was rest time, so he was supposed to be laying on the top, and he doesn't really rest. So we brought him over to the animal, and he's working on imitating, you know, actions with objects. And so uh, I was brought for the stuffed animal, he was just rest in the rocket, and then we put it to sleep, and he was, just, and he was doing a lot of imitation, and it just got so dramatic play, you know, with an adult, which is really, really nice. Hmm. So this is our call tower that we're talking about, and this little girl particularly was really super nervous about the call tower. So we were very cognizant of that and gave her her time and her space and gave her the support to get her up there, and then one day she did it all by herself, and as soon as she got to the top and saw me on the other side, you know, I did it all by myself. So we made a big deal. We were so super proud, and now it's just a regular thing for her, and she knows she can do it. So it's moments like that that not everyone sees, and she feels a part of Another couple of kiddos here who um, one of them has an articulation problem, so he kind of keeps to himself a lot, and another one has just started school and was very reserved in shock. So to see them playing together on the playground tag and running after a big safety smile on our faces um, was just something that we really wanted to you know, capture. And we should highlight too that the assessment, the way that they assess and send out um, information to parents is all through pictures. So everything is done is on the iPad. So anytime you're getting a particular standard, that's why we have even so, um, we'll talk a little bit about this, but this is a play, um, and you'll notice that in the kitchen areas, and um, that's kind of a big um, choice for a number of students. And so, really, you can just go to a kind of downstairs building um, of human figures and um, how. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Yeah. You know, just in the dramatic play area that we want to So again, talking about choice and allowing children to choose where they'd like to work and where they'd like to play. And this child is particularly fond of going to the dramatic play area every day. And it was great because he was working on building his vocabulary. <coughs> And that's a perfect place to do that because we're acting out familiar scenarios that you see happen at home. Um, and then the other children are coming in and you're trying to negotiate sharing materials. You're taking on roles. You beat the dad. No, I'll be the mom. No, you'll be the brother. No, I'm the baby. No, you the baby. You know, so it's all this action happening all the time. So you'll notice too at the bottom of each slide that what kind of the um, standards that can go with some of the photographs and we're also aligning with the standards as well. Hopefully um, in another year or so we'll be ready for the kind of accreditation process, but we're very mindful in terms of getting those eight buildings of the next early learning standards, but also aligning with the standards. And I think that's where your point of it's not just go and play. It's everything is very intentional. The, the, from the selection of materials that we're putting out every day to the lessons that we plan, even to the language that we're using with this lesson. It's all very intentional and very, very tied to an objective. Okay, so that's the last time we wanted to make this play and learning to again. So if you think about our older students and kind of science and a lab, play for our preschool students. Um, I think they're allowed. 
so this is the picture that I was talking about, just taking that lavender that then went into a lesson that then went into um, making some tango, and um, you've got a picture with our involved in other people who are participating to do a little gardening, and um, plant some bulbs so that we could have a picture with one country that was a pretty cool to do for that. Um, there's a picture of a woman body who was um, peeling the apples to make the applesauce, and that sort of goes into the, the recipe of measuring and, and, you know, and you put something together, and it comes out differently. Um, oh, so all the way down the left, he had just started, and he probably had an experience with a stand people was or a water uh, yeah. He was so excited to dive into the corn for a seed. <laughs> it just was the perfect opportunity for a picture. <laughs> mm. So And so this is just a few more kind of how we support in dramatic way in literacy, um, writing, reading, and it's doing letters and telling letters and finding and then one of the things that we're always talking about um, continuous improvement is the first year of the program. So we're really thinking about how are we doing, what can we do better. So knowing that we need to prepare for the three conditions that kind of help you create a policy to the program that we set the current, and we just kind of ask, um, would we be willing to share a course with us?
having a day where you're frustrated you just sit in a small group and you freak out for a while because you know it's very very busy everyone's happy they're kids connected and you're learning they're exploring and growing and basically you know it's just a day you know it's just a day you know it's just a day and it is such a team based approach and it's amazing how this is come together and work that they've done what they really want to work and life for the program and then I'm amazing to have them and grateful to work with them Thank you very much. The, the passion you have for your yeah. profession is obvious. Uh, our students and our yeah. town is very fortunate to, to have you. Questions or comments? I have a question, Greg. Yeah. Um, you say that you're going to get some, uh, you've been gaining students. Um, and are those students that are aging in mm -hmm. with special needs? So then do you also add in a, a peer? We started out with a few extra. extra. Gotcha. So that it kind of balances that you know, Okay, so okay. Maybe a little bit off, but that's the kind of lesson we learned for us going into the next year. Okay. But the program has really grown. Um, you know, I think we'll probably be around 38 students by the end of the year. Um, our ratios are still good um, in terms okay, of okay. the student ratio with the, um, the level of support that we have in the classroom. And I should also mention we have the sensory room. Um, in there, and <coughs> that's a really big help because there's, like you talked about, a lot of small groups, so students need a little extra activity. Um, they can be brought right next door to the test room and kind of have a little motion break and then come right back into the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, great. I think this is the first so I just wanted to make a comment that I'm very impressed with the program. I'm, program. And I'm so happy the children are starting out with the foundation of loving school. I wish my son liked school when he was young. <laughs> um, and and I, had, I was able to see firsthand how well behaved they are when I went to the Veterans Day ceremony. Um, they're just adorable. And you're doing a great job. You really are. Thank you. Well, I think that's, that's the key. We want them to love school. We want them to mm -hmm. love learning. We want them to feel safe. And a lot of it's really about the relationships in the classroom, building the relationships with the adults, building the relationships with their peers, and just feeling that a part of the overall community at their school, and they belong there, which is Right. And I think it's great you're letting the parents know, sending them pictures and things, because a lot of parents work. I know I'm just a grandmother, but I was apprehensive about my grandchildren going to school all day. And, uh, and Gabby had a great teacher over at the Friendship School when she was four. And she would send pictures home to us and, you know, and to my daughter. And it was just nice to know that she loves school. I feel like it's only my first meeting. And I, I have a rule that I don't like to talk for the first meeting. But I feel like I have to jump in. Uh, I haven't been to inside any of the Waterford Public Schools until Monday aside from going into gymnasium. So on Monday, the superintendent took me around and we went to visit all the schools. With that being said, we were there and I was very, very, and I don't throw this out a lot, impressed with what I saw. So we've gone to all these different classrooms and we're in this room and they have the snow. So one of the kids said, to the superintendent, oh, would you like some of the snow? Do you want me to show you what we're doing with the snow? <laughs> and, and going in all these rooms, so I said, Tom, what is this, third grade? Where are we, like second grade? He's like, no, this is the pre-K thing. So I'm thinking like we're in like third grade, but we're in pre-K. And the kids' soft skills, just all of them, they were all very polite, very attentive, they said hello, they spoke very well, they carried themselves, and it was very impressive. So kudos to you, and you're doing a great job. The time that we were in there, I thought it was phenomenal. Like it was off the chain, as the kids would say. It was great. So great job. But I have one question. You said it, but can you explain to us how you're communicating the kids' success and what they're doing each day. Can you just walk through how you're getting that information to the parents? I'm just curious. Of course. We use what's called Pass Messenger, so it's an app, um, and parents can get it through their phones or through their email. They provide their email address to us. And it's just a quick way for us to send, like I call it our snapshot of the day. Um, it just gives them really talking points at dinner or before bed or to get off the school bus, and we just kind of outline what we're doing. 
outline what we've done um, at a couple of centers for the day or what our outdoor experience was. If we had something really special going on in the classroom, we shared that. And then we do share their successes. So kiddos that are really working hard or writing their name, I like to grab a big snapshot and send it to their, send it to their parents that day. Um, you know, just something to make them smile and, and make learning visible. That's what I always feel like is important. I'm not a parent yet, but to send your kiddos to us for, you know, eight hours a day and trust us and I and not be able to see it in action. Like I want them to see what's going on. So that kind of gives us the opportunity to do that. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. It was it was quite impressive. Kudos to you. Any other questions? I, I concur with everyone. I think this is absolutely fabulous. So my question is, have you considered giving workshops to your colleagues in the upper grades? Because this play contest, big mm. kids can learn through play as mm. well. And have you thought about doing a road show? And, uh, and helping out your, your, your colleagues with this? Very good friend. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of go along with that, I know it's been an adjustment. We talk a lot about process art, process mm -hmm. versus product. And that was what, you know, we gave out conferences was, you know, let your child may come home and they may not be this technical <laughs> and what they're learning while they're doing the process art. They're learning creativity, they're learning problem solving, they're learning spatial awareness. Um, so that was kind of, I think we're, we're trying to kind of embed things slowly and teach people about preschool and, and how we do things and how it's done. That would be great. How to be yeah. kind to each other, yeah. how to share. Yeah. I mean, these are, are things that, you know, many adults could learn as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's true. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I count for me. So I was going to inquire about when the kiddos head up to kindergarten. Uh, I know Abraki does a step-up day. Do they still do that there? They used to? Yeah. Um, it's such a great concept. I, my kids went to Great Neck, so I know we never did that. But I think to make it a little less scary, is that something that you thought of for those kiddos? Or? I think it's a great I just want to concur. I've, I've seen what's going on, and I really think it's wonderful. I, I think all, a lot of the things that are going on in Great Neck are, are really fantastic, and um, I definitely am working on having we, – we don't have preschool beds um, yet, but we will by <laughs> spring time because <laughs> we, have, we have four – we, we have help you put them in. Well, we have extra beds, okay. so I just have to designate them. Uh, we've got some perennials in there right now, but we're going to – do, I'll do some rearranging and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Uh, you might have to back to the RPK experiences where 
the presence of learning wasn't as uh, <coughs> as it is. <coughs> and, uh, one of the things that I've been uh, very proud of about the program is one of my concerns was, is it just going to be a program that housed at grade now, or is it going to be a part of the school? And then the team and the teachers, all the teachers, pre-K to five, have really uh, made a concerted effort that it's part of the life of the school. As evidenced by fifth grade mentors who go down and help, so it's really part of the fabric of the school. Big picture, uh, projections for next year in terms of special ed pre-K parents who are uh, giving us signals that they want to send their child to our program. Uh, the question uh, maybe over another provider. Uh, we could very well be a third pre-K classroom in the budget. So um, that will become more clear over the next month. Um, and, and that's a good thing because that means we're educating them um, and we're not paying another provider to do that work for us. And besides, I think, providing a great education is certainly efficient for the savings in that. So um, that will become more clear over the next month. Other items, just a couple, uh, I always try to highlight the staff or students. Uh, of anything note, uh, Andre, who's uh, at the cast tonight, uh, has Andre Hauser has been selected to represent Connecticut school leaders at the National Principal Leaders Conference in Washington, D.C. in March as a uh, as the Connecticut representative. So we're certainly <coughs> proud of that. One of our high school seniors, Marissa Walker, has recently been selected as yeah. the 2018 mm -hmm. Connecticut Association of Schools Michael Savage Spirit of Sports winner award. Uh, and she'll receive that at a banquet in May, and uh, that is given out to one student in the state of Connecticut. Wow. So, um, certainly there's been press coverage on that, and uh, really proud of all of our students. Uh, we had a parent academy last week. It was our second annual parent academy. We had a kind of speakers uh, there. You have a brochure in front of you from that night. And seen odor on helping parents manage uh, their child's social media. Uh, which is uh, a very interesting topic, and then we had our staff, our teachers, give up a night, and we had 20 to 25 different breakouts over two sessions. Uh, I really want to commend our staff for taking time to realize to educate our parent uh, community. We're going to use the district, the high school. Uh, we hosted a, an outreach program run by the United States Attorney's Office out of New Haven in conjunction with the Waterford PD, the FBI, the DEA, and a mom who lost herself at Um It was a very powerful program. We made the FBI film on the OPA, which was shaping the dragon, which was also part of our 10th grade health curriculum. Um, but more powerful, or as powerful, is the DEA agent, an FBI agent, a DEA agent, a mom who lost a child, just in July. Uh, so very recent, uh, Chief Mahoney spoke, the United States Attorney spoke, it was a, a, a pretty uh, powerful one um, that was there, so I appreciate you uh, being at that. Um, and you know, if you look at the work we do, it's certainly beyond the core academics in our, in our unified arts. You might recall last year we had Chris Heron in, mm -hmm. he spoke to our students about uh, the uh, challenges he's had with substance abuse. We've had Mad come in. We were the big kickoff site for Mad. John Morelli, I am Dirk, about self-esteem and, 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 and believing in yourself the year before. So we do invest a lot of time and energy uh, primarily aligned to the board goal of social emotional learning. So it's just uh, another example of the work we do in that area. Just a brief update on our strategic plan. Work continues in that area. Kathy Colon has been leading a district inventory of our social emotional programming. This is the goal in the strategic plan for this year. Our first district data team meeting was scheduled for today. It was scheduled for today <laughs> because uh, we had to postpone it due to the weather. We did have a delay today. That's going to be scheduled to uh, January 3rd. Back in February, we have a day planned to do a district initiative mapping exercise, which is another goal in the strategic plan to see what are we doing, how are we measuring it, is it having an impact. Um, so that'll take place in February. That's being planned. Uh, concurrently, we're going to begin work on developing our district assessment framework, which is another goal within the strategic plan. And, we look forward to presenting this in a full update in the spring so you can actually see the products of, of the plan. 
and so uh, look forward to that. Just two other quick notes. Budget development continues, as I just mentioned. Uh, we'll receive uh, the recommended budget at the end of January for deliberations in February. And last but not least, a happy and safe holiday season to you all over the next uh, 30 or so days. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Tom. Any questions or comments for Tom? Moving on, committee and other reports. We have our uh, policy committee uh, meeting minutes in the package. Uh, we'll be dealing with the actual policies later on in the uh, Under the finance subcommittee uh, minutes, do you want to go over the uh, budget goals? Sure. So uh, in the finance, the finance committee at their meeting on December 4th, um, considered uh, a slate of budget assumptions. We're going uh, we're gonna to discuss and take action on that under your business. But so that slate of budget assumptions are really the guidelines for which administration builds a budget that goes to you and really the assumptions that you'll use in forwarding a budget to the Board of Finance and ultimately the RTM. And certainly the legal things we can uh, discuss those in more length, but it's always uh, part of the finance committee uh, work with that evening. The committee assignments uh, you have in your package and the handout today, a listing of the various committees of the board and some of the representative bodies, who, who has been on those committees and whatnot. And the process is if you would let the chair know, and let's use Caroline as a conduit, uh, what positions you're interested in, uh, and then at the next meeting uh, we'll have a list of those uh, bodies and proposed members for the board to look at and uh, formally approve. Tom, are there any other uh, items or any other committee members? Just one, I'm primarily in China, certainly. Uh, the, as you know, the RCM subcommittee on community use of schools has been meeting. We just met this week on Monday to uh, approve a proposed NLU between the town and the Board of Ed. Beyond, um, this item of the MOU is on the Board of Ed finance subcommittee meeting scheduled for next Tuesday. And that group uh, approves uh, to, and recommends uh, that MOU be signed by the full board. It will go to the board that same evening, Tuesday evening, which we have a special board meeting scheduled. Uh, and you have a copy of that MOU uh, in your materials. Uh, Craig, anything to add to that? No, it's, it's been quite a process. <laughs> <laughs> We've been meeting since either May or June, so it's been yeah, pretty free on it. It's been yeah. rigorous, yeah. And I was involved in another committee when I was on the RTM a couple of years ago because this thing is just—it's been a political football, and it's just been a thorn in everyone's side for quite a bunch of years. So it's nice to see it potentially going away. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other items? I have a question, um, Greg, about committees. Um, there is one listed for CABE. Are we, I thought... So I, had, I had a mix on that, too. Yeah, um, we took CABE out, right? Right, exactly. Okay, so that's off the list. Okay, thank you. And the Township School Governing Board, we're not part of that anymore, are we? Okay. And it, it may be that some of these committees are... We will not continue. We do not have standing committees. This is something policy we want to look at. We may want to have standing committees. Uh, even though we're the members of the That's for another meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, under new business, uh, we have a proposed calendar. We also have uh, the results of the uh, survey of our teachers as to their position. This is definitely the calendar changes. Uh, Sure. Craig, if I may, um, I, can I give you a service for a report? Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> no, I just wanted to, if anybody's free tomorrow morning starting at 10, uh, the youth service bureau, they need help wrapping gifts. This town has been so generous, and, um, and the, our firehouses, our schools, our teachers, our, our children, um, it's just been wonderful. And, uh, and, and now we need to wrap everything and get everything ready for the families to pick up next week. So to all of you uh, teachers that had, you know, your, your students involved, thank you so much. And this year, too, um, we've, we're helping out a lot of senior citizens. 
So I think that's mm -hmm. nice. And then um, Danny made a list of some um, people that are that are at Bayview, mm -hmm. some grandparents that are at Bayview, and they wrote a list of some things that their grandchildren might like. So we're going to wrap those gifts up and bring them to those grandparents because they can't get out and shop. Oh, so. God, the is doing a phenomenal job. We're lucky to have them and all of you in our in our town. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. Okay, back to the calendar. I have a question uh, on Thanksgiving that week you have a full day of school on the 20th would there be any harm in changing that to a half day there's certainly no harm in it uh, we do meet the uh, state uh, statute the number of hours of school a year that certainly would not be any kind of jeopardy uh, we are uh, well, we are one of the I would say it's not common necessarily or universal that we have a Wednesday before Thanksgiving month. It's traditionally been a day off from school. So really talking about Tuesday, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have the Wednesday off. So we can shorten it. Uh, it does reduce our school hours for the year yeah. by three hours or so. Um, I would say it's... Uh, Yes, of course, prerogative. I would say it would be uncommon to have a half day on the Tuesday with the Wednesday off. Mm -hmm. But again, but my thought process was traffic. There's, there's so much traffic on Wednesday the day before, and even on, on Thursday, excuse me, Tuesday. If you're going from the special reality five corridor, the difference between leaving at say three or three thirty or four as opposed to one thirty or two is immense. It, it can result in a multi multiplication of hours. The difference between the six hours, for example. And I suspect that people are pretty excited in their classrooms around Thanksgiving time and no educational harm would be done by having a half day whereas you might make the life of many families a lot easier. So, do we have any data? Do, are there attendance records that we could look at? Are there people just taking their kids out of school? And, you know, is this something that would be worthwhile? Uh, I can't say that that Tuesday is an abnormally high right. absence day. I see our principals nodding. I mean, I don't have numerical data, but they can certainly provide anecdotal data if you're seeing mass exodus on Tuesday before <laughs> Thanksgiving. What was the rationale behind having a half day or a full day off the day before? A, tradition here in Waterford, B, uh, it would be a day that uh, parents would probably pull the kids out of school, maybe not for the whole day, certainly part of the day. And certainly staff, uh, some staff would need to be on the road. So. <coughs> Uh, you know what, you know, I, I don't like half days. I don't either. Half days are, you might as well take the whole day off and you don't half day. That, that's why I think many school districts have gone from half, the half day idea because it's a waste of time. That's it. Yeah. Anyone else? I concur. I think that because we already gave all, uh, the Wednesday off, I wouldn't want to take any more time out of that week. Mm -hmm. Any other time? Seems like we have a consensus. Do I have a motion to approve the calendar as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll pass it. Any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> so, we don't want to start after Labor Day? That was the discussion, yeah. The, you did, I'm, damn it, I'm sorry. You did a, you did a survey, and you included the survey in the packet, and that was just a guess at the last meeting, but you pulled the staff because you wanted to pull them to see. And it says that, well, I don't know if we're reading it. You know, the fact. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't real clear. Not that I'm vying for what you do. I, I spoke to Tony Sheridan um, about, because I know he had a lot of concerns last year about, not concerns, but he was wondering why we couldn't start after Labor Day. He said that he has a list of businesses that will not hire any of our water for students over the summer because we do start before Labor Day. We start school before Labor Day. And on this calendar, it's only two days. Um, so, I mean, and look at all the other school systems. Before or after? 
Connecticut all decided to do that, then that would be one thing. But we're, uh, I, I don't like the fact that if we, if we changed it, we would be an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? All those in favor of the motion to approve the calendar say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Aye. 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 We need to appoint someone to the town of are there any volunteers? I can stay. No, you have to move. You have to have. We have to have a motion. No, just one. Just one. Motion to. I would like to move. Make that motion. Motion to. Any discussion? Any favor? Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> I'm just figuring out what it is. <laughs> I'm going to four meetings and I'm just, I just got a handle on it. You have uh, before you the budget assumption that the finance committee is recommended to the board. Uh, item. Are there any questions about it before we uh, no. act on it? Then could I have a motion to approve the uh, budget assumptions? I move that we approve the budget assumptions as written and the draft of our packet. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. We're now on to the second reading of policies. And Craig, would you lead us through this? Sure. Uh, first policy is uh, policy one 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 two two zero two two of school facilities. Um, this, this policy was reviewed uh, to the section subcommittee in conjunction with the MOU that's going to be presented to the board uh, next week. Uh, and this has uh, seen been reviewed by county council as well as board council. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Yeah. Question, yeah. Greg. Is this a first reading? So these are all second readings. Okay. Yeah, because there wasn't at the November meeting. Okay. I have a motion then for its approval. I move. Greg, second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is approved. Great. Uh, 
Yes, uh, so policy 4112, uh, appointments and conditions of employment. Um, the, the policy came to uh, the board with um, uh, kind of strong uh, or tightened up nepotism language. And then uh, through the first reading last month, there was some um, concern that our recusal language wasn't clear enough. And um, thanks to uh, the chair, uh, that language has been tightened up. It's been reviewed through the policy subcommittee uh, last week. And um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Just one change I would suggest. In, in that uh, crucial language, instead of the word should, it would just substitute shall. Okay. Comments, questions, discussion? Could I have a motion that the policy be approved? As yes. amended. Yes. As amended. I move. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Students, policy 5000. So uh, this is uh, 5118, uh, registration and residency. Uh, this came to the board um, to clarify some, um, let me see, changes in the amount of cost for special ed services, uh, foreign exchange students, uh, individuals who haven't uh, received a high school diploma, um, and then there were uh, questions at the board meeting last month about could we uh, include language around uh, where the child sleeps the majority of nights. Uh, after reviewing that uh, question with a legal counsel, um, not as easy as just to say it is simply like that in the policy. Uh, we have to really look at each case in its totality uh, determine residency. Uh, while uh, the attorney was looking at that, they did uh, clean up some language that you see here, um, uh, which is why it's been track changed but brought to you as a second reading. Questions from the board? I don't see anything on here about the students who would be residing. Would they be considered the, if they're homeless, that be safe, the safe homes that they want to country school? Or? So uh, homeless children uh, is section four, and uh, a homeless law is really the Vincent McKinney Act, which is a federal statute, uh, which uh, all students of the country school who are DCF placements would be considered homeless, but also uh, there's uh, sometimes where uh, children are displaced uh, and maybe living with other family members that's homeless. Uh, there might be children who, um, for whatever reason, have been uh, either have left their home or kicked out of their home, sleeping with others, that they could be considered homeless. So uh, there's lots of factors for homeless, which is why our special ed director is the homeless liaison, uh, where I kind of do the residency. We, we want to bifurcate those kind of roles to see is it the homeless situation and then to see residents. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to you, same students. Uh, <coughs> you want to question? Oh, the same students. Yes. Um, so, um, legal counsel, uh, basically for exchange students, uh, uh, when it comes to um, granting uh, student visas, there. Uh, uh, potentially problems um, in that, so you have to be very careful about uh, who we accept as exchange, exchange students uh, because there's a lot of um, companies that kind of uh, use for profit uh, when they try to uh, have exchange students, so um, that's why that 
has been stricken from this policy, and certainly if those opportunities come up, then um, we can look at that as a uh, case by case. Any other questions? Thank you, Greg. Could I have a motion then to approve the policy of the Senate? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Aye. Motion Next policy is student wellness, uh, policy 6142.101. Um, this uh, was uh, really brought uh, due to um, the uh, uh, Health and Hunger Free Act of 2010, um, where there's been some revisions to that policy federally, uh, and that we've taken this policy from the Cade version to the Shipman and Goodman version, which is why the second reading. Uh, this policy has uh, been uh, vetted through not only legal counsel, but our food service director and director of finance and operations. Does the board have any questions? Okay, let's move on to. Uh, Would you like to adopt that policy? Yeah. I thought this was the first reading. Uh, this one it was in November. It was in November. Was second it. reading as well from uh, okay. last month. That's why the press changes are included. Okay, motion to approve then as presented. Go ahead. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. And then uh, two new policies uh, tonight, uh, student discipline, policy 5114, uh, which um, really this one is uh, just being brought up from some statutory changes uh, on um, kind of expulsion notice, alternate education opportunities, uh, and as such, if the board chooses to uh, adopt this per its own bylaws, it could tonight. First question. Any questions? So let me just make sure I under, I'm following it right. This one is the first meeting, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And we can decide to adopt it tonight or have review it and then hit it next month, is right. that correct? Well, we have policies that we really have no choice but to enact. Because if the law has changed, we were required to enact a policy. We now have a policy in place that allows us to pass that policy on a first meeting. You don't have to. We could ask for a second meeting and just essentially table the matter to the next meeting. But what type of mandated change we can approve on a first meeting? Okay. Thank you. I had a question, if you don't mind, about the um, conduct off school grounds. I, I realize the on a school sponsored activity. Yes. Um, and this year on what letter? Uh, yeah, oh, it's letter B on the Um So they're off with their family or whoever or wherever, and, and are we talking um, sort of like criminal offenses or what would they, what do they? Yeah, so uh, when we talk about off school ground behavior, mm -hmm. if there's a nexus to uh, disrupting the school environment, that could be one. So if uh, people are uh, Snapchatting, Instagramming, things that they shouldn't about a peer, and the peer feels that they don't want to come to school, that could be a nexus of all school ground behavior. Uh, when you had said criminal behavior, yes, uh, if we get a police report that uh, there's been uh, something that has risen to a, a felonious uh, uh, kind of a charge, that could be grounds for uh, the school to take uh, expulsion action. Okay, does, it, does it detail somewhere in here about it being a cyber slash things of that nature? Yeah, there is a whole section on cyber okay. But I mean in this particular, like you're off school grounds, you're in the internet space, so to speak. I mean, I don't know if that needed to be more explicit in there. Or Do you have a whole cyber bullying okay. and bullying policy that, uh, that talks about the consequences of this that. policy here, okay. and uh, students get noticed with that okay. at the elementary level, uh, with the 
parent handbook and at the middle and high school level uh, with their own uh, handbooks with this parent uh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Could I have a motion to approve policy 5114? Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Aye. 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 And the uh, next policy is also a first reading. Um, the, it is really uh, minor responses uh, because there's been a uh, dissolution of the Office of Protection and Advocacy for uh, persons with disabilities. So uh, basically, if there are any uh, concerns with abuse and neglect for uh, adults uh, that under our care, uh, that would be reported to uh, Department of uh, Developmental Services, the DDS. And again, this was really statutorily driven. Um, so if the board chooses to adopt this policy tonight, they, uh, they could. Any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion? I move that we accept the policy as presented. Is there a second? Great. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Aye pass. Motion passes. The chairman. This is the pleasure of the board. <laughs> to adjourn. Yeah, we have a motion. Can we just welcome Glenn Patterson? He came in. He's the uh, uh, Board of Finance representative. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Hi. 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 Welcome, Glenn. I move that we adjourn. Oh, if you, Chris doesn't want to adjourn yet, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said it about great next, but I just want to say I toured the other school. We toured the high school. We toured Quaker Hill on Monday. We toured the middle school. We toured Asagachi. And I was very, very impressed with everything that I saw. I mean, every classroom that we were in, there was a lot of teaching and learning going on. And it was just top notch and everyone, Caroline has been very welcoming, Tom has been very welcoming and you've all been very welcoming and hospitable so everyone has been very nice and polite so it was a pleasure and the schools were just great, I mean just phenomenal. Every school that we were in, if we went into 50 classrooms, 54 of them, there was active learning going on so it was very impressive. Thanks. Okay, yeah, what should you do with that? Some of I tried. Great. 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 Great.